Since the primary sources of detailed information about the resurrection of Jesus come from the canonical Gospels, I'd like to touch on another problem for the historical reliability of those Gospels, and consequently, the resurrection details found within them. The problem is this. The Gospels have been heavily embellished and edited over time. In fact, many of the most well-known verses were never part of the original writings. This deliberate altering of religious writings was apparently so rampant during the first and second centuries that the author of Revelation actually included a curse at the end of his work to discourage any would-be editors from tampering with it. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. If anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. But just how many alterations are we talking about and how extensive? A word here and there? An additional detail added for clarification? One of the most well-known verses in all of the Bible is found within one of the most well-known accounts in all of the Bible, the woman caught in adultery from the Gospel of John. Here we are told that Jesus said, He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. But did Jesus actually say that? Are we being given history or a fictional insertion into the original Gospel? And is there any way we can know for sure either way? As always, we can't know with the same confidence as we know that William Lane Craig is a, oh wait, I better use a different analogy here. Um, in the same way we know that two plus two equals four, but we can know beyond any reasonable doubt. Let's look at a few facts regarding the story of the woman caught in adultery. Fact, this account only appears in the Gospel of John. And being such a beautiful show of compassion and forgiveness by Jesus, one wonders how Mark, Matthew, and Luke failed to include the scene in their own accounts. We'd almost have to assume that if they had even heard about the account, they would have included it in their own writings. But just because this scene is absent from the other Gospels doesn't mean John wasn't recording something he knew had happened, right? Fact. The entire story is not only absent from the other three Gospels, it is absent from many of the earliest and most authoritative copies of the Gospel of John as well. St. Augustine, writing early in the 5th century, explained the absence of the story in some manuscripts by claiming that unscrupulous men had removed the pericope because they felt it gave women carte blanche or a blank check to have adulterous affairs and any other sins they might be drooling to commit. Certain persons of little faith, or rather, enemies of the true faith, fearing, I suppose, lest their wives should be given impunity in sinning, removed from their manuscripts the Lord's act of forgiveness toward the adulteress, as if he who had said, sin no more, had granted permission to sin. But just how many manuscripts are missing the story? Let's have a quick look. Papyrus 66, Papyrus 75, Codex Sinaiticus, Codex Vaticanus, Codex Alexandrinus, Codex Ephraimi, Codex Washingtonianus, Codex Borgianus, Codex Regis, Codex Athus Lavrincis, Codex Petropolitanus Purpurius. I am not making these up, people. Codex Macedoniensis, Codex Sangalensis, Codex Corridethi, Codex Monocensis, Unseals 141 and 211, Minuscules 3, 12, 15, 21, 22, 32, 33, 36, 39, 44, 49, 63, Hut, 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 oh, sorry, 72, 87, 96, 97, 106, 108, 124, 131, 134, 139, 151, 157, 169, 209, 213, 228, 297, 388, 391, 401, 416, 445, 488, 496, 499, 501, 523, 537, 542, 554, 565, 
Buy 578, 584, 703, 719, 723, 730, 731, 736, 741, 742, 768, 770, 772, 773, 776, 777, 780, 799, 800, 817, 827, 828, 843, 896, 989, 1077, 1100, 1178, 1230, 1241, 1242, 1253, 1333, 2193, and 2768. Plus the majority of lectionaries, some of the old Latin manuscripts, the majority of Syriac manuscripts, the Sahidic dialect of the Coptic, the Gothic manuscripts, some Armenian manuscripts, the Georgian manuscripts of Adish, and lastly, the Diatessaron. I think it's safe to say that St. Augustine's explanation doesn't hold water. Fact, the story is not mentioned by any church father until the fourth century. Here are some of the early fathers for whom we have many writings, but who make no mention of the passage in all their works. Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian, Origen, Cyprian, Nonus, Cyril of Alexandria, and Cosmos. But just because someone is silent on a passage doesn't mean they were not aware of it, right? Fact. Origen, in his commentary on the Gospel of John, doesn't mention the story of the adulteress. His commentary covers the entire Gospel of John, but interestingly, he skips from John 7.51 to John 8, 12, the exact verses of the adulterous story. Perhaps Origen had nothing to say about it, or perhaps he just didn't like a Jesus who basically slapped God in the face by ignoring the Mosaic law concerning adultery. Or perhaps the story simply wasn't in Origen's copy of John. Since the story isn't mentioned in any surviving Christian text prior to the fourth century, this means that if it was originally part of John's gospel, it floated around for 200 years without anyone taking any notice of it. And suddenly, after 200 years of circulation and discussion about the surrounding verses, everyone begins writing about it and hunting down early copies in order to delete it from those copies. How plausible does that sound? More could be said about the adulterous story, such as how the language of the passage differs from the rest of the gospel, but it should be evident to all that this passage was added much later, most likely sometime during the third century.